I saw in the video how to set up the master. Today, we will start creating the details. First, we will create a region. We will name the region grid or tabular form. Next, the region type will be dynamic content. This block of PL slash SQL code declares two variables and begins a PL slash SQL block for processing. This line of code assigns an HTML form element to the V underscore HTML variable. SL return grid form. Assigns an ID to the form for identification purposes. Method equals post. Data submitted with post is sent in the request body, not the URL, making it more secure than the get method. V underscore HTML equals V underscore HTML appends content to the existing V underscore HTML variable. Table creates a table in HTML. ID equals SL return grid table assigns an ID to the table, making it uniquely identifiable for styling, CSS, or manipulation, JavaScript. Class equals tier report table adds a CSS class to the table for predefined or custom styling. In Oracle Apex, Tier report table is typically used for standard table formatting. This code appends an HTML table header, theod, and begins the table, tbody, to the v underscore HTML variable. Here's a quick explanation. This is mainly written to create the table header. The line v underscore html equals v underscore html tbody appends the opening tbody tag to the v underscore html variable. This statement is used to return the dynamically generated html content stored in the variable v underscore html to the calling process, such as an Oracle Apex region or a pl slash SQL function. The end statement in pl slash SQL marks the conclusion of a pl slash SQL block. Now I will save. We can see that the header of my custom tabular form has appeared. Now I will add columns according to the header. V underscore HTML equals V underscore HTML appends the content in this case, tr, to the v underscore html variable, which already holds dynamically generated html. Begins a table cell, td, which will hold the drop-down menu. Select defines a drop-down menu, combo box, inside the table cell. Attributes of select. Class equals item select. Assigns a CSS class, item select, to the drop-down for styling or JavaScript manipulation. Name equals F01. Specifies the name of the dropdown field, F01. In Oracle Apex, this is often used for referencing form fields or submitting data. On change equals update unit and stock, this. Specifies a JavaScript function, update unit and stock, to execute when the user selects an option from the dropdown. The this keyword passes the current dropdown element as a parameter to the function allowing the function to access its value or properties. Now I will check the validation. Is good. This line dynamically appends a span element to the v underscore html variable, displaying information about the unit of measurement, uom, or stock details. Here's an explanation. Class equals unit stock. Assigns the CSS class unit stock to this span. This class can be used for custom styling or targeting the element in JavaScript. Content, UOM, not applicable. The display text shows UOM, unit of measurement, followed by not applicable, meaning not available. This is an HTML input element specifically designed to capture numeric input, such as a quantity value. Input. Creates a form field where the user can enter data. Type equals number specifies that the input should only accept numeric values. Class equals quantity input. Assigns a CSS class, quantity input, to the element for styling or JavaScript targeting.
assigns the class rate input to the input element, specifies the smallest increment allowed for the numeric input. Here, the value can increment or decrement by 0.01. Next, I added this input type for quantity percent. I added this to input the discount amount. I added this input field for tax. I have used read only here so that the row wise total amount cannot be edited. The read only attribute in the input element specifies that the field is not editable by the user. At the end, I added a button to delete the row. Assigns the class delete row button to the button. The time symbol, multiplication sign or close symbol, is displayed as the button's label. Now I will save and check. We can see that the input fields for our tabular form structure are ready. Now, we will continue with more steps. This code adds a hidden input field, input type equals hidden name equals F10 value equals, for storing additional data for new rows, with an empty value by default. It then closes the table row, slash tr, completing the row's HTML structure. With this line of code, I am ending the HTML structure for my table. It closes the tbody tag, which contains the table's data rows, and the table tag itself. This code adds a button and closes the form. BR slash adds a line break before the button to separate it visually from the table. Button type equals button ID equals add row button class equals T button add new row slash button. Slash form closes the form tag, completing the HTML structure. Now I will save. We can see that the add new row button has appeared along with the input fields. Now I will try to give the tabular form a better look, and for that, I need to use CSS. This CSS enhances the visual styling of a form and table inside the hashtag SL return grid form, including table headers, input fields, buttons, and row interactions for a polished user interface. It ensures responsiveness, hover effects, smooth transitions, and proper alignment for elements like buttons, dropdowns, and rows. Now I will save and check the result. We can see that the CSS code is not affecting the tabular form. The reason is that I did not use the static ID of the tabular form in the CSS. I have used an ID named SL return grid form here. Now I will use this ID as the static ID for the region. I will assign the static ID, save again, and check the result. Yes, we can see that my tabular form now has a much better look. My tabular form is currently completely static. So, to make it dynamic, I need to use SQL along with JavaScript. Let's get started. First, I will make the item a select list. For that, I wrote a simple query, just the way it is done to handle display and return values. Since I haven't used a separate table for units, I'm using a case statement, which I discussed earlier in the video.
So now I will go back to the tabular form. This line initializes the V underscore select underscore options variable with an HTML option element that acts as a placeholder in a dropdown, showing select an item as a disabled and preselected option. Then, I stored the query in R. V underscore select underscore options equals V underscore select underscore options. Appends the new option HTML string to the existing V underscore select underscore options variable. Option value equals R dot item underscore ID. Creates an option element with a value attribute set to R dot item underscore ID. R dot item underscore ID is likely a value fetched from your query, representing the item's unique identifier. Data unit name equals r.unit double quotes. Adds a custom data unit name attribute to the option, storing the item's unit, e.g., kg, pcs. r.unit is dynamically fetched from the query. Data stock equals a null double quotes. Adds a custom data stock attribute, but its value is set to null here. You can replace null with dynamic stock data if needed. r.item underscore name slash option. The text displayed in the drop-down option is set to r.item underscore name, e.g., the item's name. The option tag is then closed with slash option. We can see that the data has appeared in the select list. In the next video, I will show how to solve complex calculations using JavaScript. If you didn't understand anything in this video, let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching the video.